Prusa's new, new, organic supports have really revolutionized how I'm printing new parts. The organic structures are really neat to watch being printed, almost like statues or artworks in their own right, but they give me the heebie-jeebies in a way grid supports do not. I mean, look at this. This stuff triggers a trypophobia in me that I didn't even know I had. But the difference in surface quality and reduction in scarring is phenomenal. But this isn't without a couple of nits I want to pick. So here's my experience so far with organic supports. Because organic supports can wrap around your part, starting from a different location at the base, if you have an overhang that's not directly below the base plate, the supports will automatically wrap around the part or move a lateral distance in order to meet the overhang, which is a fantastic improvement over grid supports that have to be positioned directly below the overhang. This basically leaves you with a couple of options, and in general I try to design parts that minimize the use of supports, period. Of course, for client designs, this isn't always an option, given that some designs will be produced using other methods and not mass produced using 3D printing. If I have to use supports, I want the base of it on the printing plate, not on top of the part. It's already been scarred once, let's not ruin another surface. But with organic supports, this is much easier. But now the slicer is given free reign to basically place that part wherever it wants. And if it's in a place you don't want, you're basically stuck playing a less interesting whack-a-mole using support blockers to try to get the base to move where you want it to. Also, if you're printing a large part that takes up most of the print bed, it may place the support structures outside the print bed, leaving you once again trying to move supports just to keep the print inside your four corners. And finally, if you use the arrange button to optimize the parts, the arrange button doesn't take into account the footprint of the support structures, which will basically cause an overlap error when trying to slice. Inside Prusa Slicer, there's several parameters you can adjust in order to change how and where the organic supports are generated. One thing to note is that when the supports are generated, they extend upward, getting thinner and branching out horizontally. The farther up, out, and away from the base of the support, the more force that gets applied at the base as the print head continues to print new layers, which has the potential to eject the support from your build plate which actually happened here, but the print managed to save itself by building up from the filament it extruded into midair, which was super cool. So the recommendation here is to do your regular shopping list of things to get better first layer adhesion. You can also increase the thickness of the branches with the branch diameter angle option. Increasing this creates some big old chonkers at the base and provides more stability, but also uses more filament and increases print time. The branch diameter with double walls of three millimeter pretty much guarantees you'll have double walls all the way up your critical branches. And honestly, I don't see a reason to change this unless you really want to optimize your filament usage for your supports. You can adjust the maximum branch angle lower for better structural support, but the lower you go, you start to lose the primary benefit of organic supports with it branching out horizontally. So again, there's a trade-off here. My personal approach so far is to leave everything else at the defaults and to slightly raise the branch diameter angle to keep the organic support structure from being removed from the bed. You also have two other options here, the branch density and the branch distance from the surface of the actual part. And these more have to deal with how the branches adhere to the solid layer of the print. There may be specialized use cases for adjusting these parameters, but in my experience so far, you can just leave the defaults. The density and distance leaves a pretty nice surface finish as is. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't some optimization potential here, but in my experience, that isn't so much the case. Now, time for a personal anecdote and why I'll be shilling for organic supports till the day I die. Here, I'm building a functional prototype for a client. And unfortunately, due to the shape and size of the prototype, there really isn't a good way to slice this without using supports. I have to print eight of these giant wedges in total, and that create an inner and outer shell. But look at this. The difference between organic supports and grid supports is absolutely mental. Each wedge was about eight and a half hours in total. Eight and a half hours times eight is 6.16 days of on print time. Now with the default grid supports, that time to print goes up to a whopping 34 hours per piece, nearly double in print time. But that's not all. There's also a huge reduction in the amount of filament used for the printing of the support structures. With grid supports, that's 272.8 grams per piece. With the organic supports, it's chopped down to a relatively minimal 63.52 grams. 
63.52 grams times eight is, is 508 grams. That's half a roll of filament. 272.8 times eight is 2,182. That's over two full rolls of filament. Two full rolls of filament. And the worst part is that all of that filament is gonna end up straight in the trash. This is just for support structures. This has nothing to do with the actual body of the print itself. Looking at the cost of a single spool of PLA, I mean, you're, you're looking at somewhere around $19. So you're basically throwing away $28, $29 worth of filament, $29. I can absolutely think of a couple more fun ways to waste $29. Oh, but think of all the absolutely swole Pikachus you could print for $29 worth of filament. But looking at the cost of power is also an important metric. And obviously, if you run a print farm, this is going to be more important to you. But for me, running a single printer, the cost to run the printer is only 23 cents, which doubles with the grid supports. To be honest, that is a cost that I'm willing to eat. So I'm mostly OK with that. But finally, is there a reason to not use organic supports? And I've been sitting here racking my brain and honestly, no. At least I couldn't come up with a good reason other than it potentially triggering your trypophobia. I've been using organic supports exclusively since I installed Bruce Slicer 2.6 and other than the minor issues I've mentioned previously, there really is no downside. So what's the final verdict? Bruce's organic supports are fantastic and an absolute game changer for support structures. And in fact, they are so good I believe it's worth switching to Prusa Slicer, no questions asked. I don't think I'll ever use regular supports ever again. They really are that good. So anyway, I hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.